What's going on everybody, it's your boy D from DNC Digital and I'm back with another Instagram Live. I hope everybody's doing good. Hope everybody's doing great. We are here to talk about Wrestling Revolution 956 versus Texas. It's gonna be a uh, gonna be a great event going down going down this Saturday, August 22nd. And we're gonna be talking about um, we're gonna be talking uh, to a whole bunch of wrestlers um, from that event. So you got a, uh, there's a fatal four-way with Blackheart, Edgar Garza, Just Nick, and Mooncat. And we're going to be talking to uh, Blackheart and Mooncat from that particular match. Uh, it's going to be uh, Chris Austin versus Aaron Mercer. So hopefully we can get Chris Austin in. Going to be uh, Bedlam uh, defending his championship against Chocolate Papi. And we're going to be talking to Johnny Bedlam later on tonight. And um, then we got Joe Haas against T-Ray. Uh, this is going to be two large men just hitting each other. And that's going to be a great match. We're going to be talking to Joe. Uh, we're also going to be talking to Mateo Osuna, um, who actually is not booked, but he uh, decided he wanted time tonight. And he needed to say something to Wrestling Revolution Management. So he demanded that he gets time tonight also. Um so uh, hopefully this all goes well. I never had like a multiple guest thing, but how's everybody doing? How's everybody? Uh, how's everybody's night? Um, by the way, whenever I uh, bring somebody up, um, if you want to ask them questions, just hit that little question mark next to the uh, comment section, and I will relay all the uh, all the questions and all the messages. And just so because in case in case we we lose some of the questions in the chat. You can hit that little uh, question mark, and we'll be off and running. Um, so it's going to be uh, Wrestling Revolution. You got to look them up under uh, Official Wrestling Revolution. It's called 956 versus Texas. It's going to be um, wrestlers from the 956 from the Rio Grande Valley against um, just a bunch of wrestlers from around Texas. Chris Carter is also going to be um, joining us tonight. Uh, so it's going to be uh, Bedlam, uh, Mateo, Osuna, Chris Carter, Mooncat, and hopefully, um, oh, we're also going to get Joe Haas and hopefully uh, Chris Austin. So um, everybody just, uh, just uh, what's up? We're going to be here for just a little bit, and then we'll be talking to Johnny Bedlam first. What's up, everybody? What's going on? Hopefully everybody's doing it right. Um, everybody who's here, like, uh, what have you guys thought about uh, AEW recently and WWE recently? Um, if you think, um, and what do you think about NXT? Uh, their whole thing that that uh, all their releases that they did, uh, and pretty much um, it was uh, Johnny Laurinaitis and Vince McMahon who did those cuts without. Triple H or Shawn Michaels knowing about it. That's got to suck. A lot of uh, really talented wrestlers have been released. Um, but hopefully, and I'm sure they'll be all right. They'll be all right. They'll be, they're, they're, they're going to find, um, they'll be all right. Their career will be fine because they are way too talented to uh, not succeed. Um, let me get this going. So you know what? Let's do this. Hmm. Get this started. Johnny Bedlam. What's up, man? How you doing, sir? I, I'm doing swell, my guy. Uh, about as swell as I can be. Yourself? I'm doing good. Thank you very much. Thank you for your time to talk about Wrestling Revolution 956 versus Texas. Uh, staying on that subject, how important is this event uh, for Texas wrestling? I mean, you're starting to see a good wave of shows and promotions kind of coming together and trying to put on talent, not just from their area, but from the entire state. Uh, this is one where you can get a certain 
specific area that doesn't necessarily get a lot of shine, but has a lot of uh, talented guys in there that I've been fortunate to work with for the past couple of years. Um, and I think, you know, a show like this can not only help the guys from the nine, five, six, get a little more experience under their belt, which they desperately need. Um, but also can help, uh, guys from around the state get some more eyes on themselves by coming down there. And so you're defending your championship against chocolate poppy. Um, what is there to be said about your opponent and what, what can you expect from him coming up this Sunday? Well, it's very funny that this is a 956 versus Texas show, and neither myself or Chocolate Poppy is from the 956. So I'm baffled as to why this is the main event for this show. It should be the main event. My bad. No, it's not the main event. They don't have their champion in the main event, which is another thing that pisses me off a little bit. You know, I come in, guns blazing, win the, win the Grand Warrior Championship on my first try, my first try, and I'm not even respected enough to get in the main event of this show, you know? And so when you put this tagline, 956 versus Texas, and then you don't give me an opponent from the 956, I, I didn't bury my own territory, all right? So you, do you feel like there's underlying motives as to why you are not defending your championship in the main event? I don't know. Maybe they're, maybe they're jealous. Maybe they don't like a guy that's not from the 956 taking their title whenever he damn well pleases. But I'm not so slighted about facing Chocolate Poppy. Chocolate Poppy's a hell of a competitor, man. He's going to gyrate his hips, get half of the women in McAllen pregnant if they aren't already. And, you know, it's, it's going to be a hell of a show. And it's going to be a hell of a match. I look forward to seeing Chocolate Poppy on Sunday. But as for the main event, you know, it's if they want to put two other guys in there that don't have a viable claim to my championship, then by all means, go ahead. It's not my show. As long as you pay me what I'm worth, I'll show up and do my job. Um, you have been uh, raising the value of yourself in the past couple of years. What would you say, what would you credit all that growth to? Um, hmm. A lot of self-discovery. And also uh, shoddy business, shoddy business that's been done by multiple people in the wrestling world. Um, you know, sometimes you see stuff and you don't like it. Nobody has the balls to say anything about it. But, hey, I, might, I have a big mouth. I might as well be the one to put myself out there and at least try and change something. You know, maybe something does change for the better. Who knows? But if I can grab a mic and have people listen to what I have to say and be damn good at it, why would I not use that to implement some kind of change? You have been uh, trained by WWE Hall of Famer, two-time WWE Hall of Famer, Booker T, at uh -huh. Reality of Wrestling. Um, after learning uh, what, you, what you've learned from him, what yeah. would you say is the one thing that people don't focus on enough when they try to become a professional wrestler? And what's one thing that they focus on too much? Uh, too many people focus on gifts. They focus on getting things for gifts for Twitter so they can get a bunch of more followers and have stuff, you know, have people get eyes on their, on their fancy moves and whatnot. That's cool and all. I mean, if you can do a 630, I'm not going to stop you from getting famous. But, shoot, to me it's not about the moves. What do we watch wrestling for? We watch for stories. We watch for characters. We watch it for people that – you know, we can connect to in some cathartic way that mm -hmm. we get some kind of release from watching them. Nobody cares about how many moves Cena did. Uh, nobody cares about how many moves Austin did, but they remember the ones that matter. They remember the stunner. They remember the attitude adjustment because it's how that move made them feel, how they built moments around those moves, not the 60 different moves that they did in the rest of the match. But no, it's, it's about who you are. It's not about what you can do. Anybody can wrestle. Anybody can wrestle. You've seen that with them bring in celebrities. Rappers can learn how to wrestle. Anybody can learn how to wrestle. But it takes a certain special someone to be able to take an audience, connect with them on a personal level to where you can bring them in. Bring them into the ring, you know? We're not looking for this. We're looking for this. That's mm -hmm. what gets us. That's what gets us is the reaction, that noise. It's like a drug, you know? I don't like doing 60 different moves. You know, if people, if people want to claim that they're the best wrestler, by all means, cool. If you can do 60 different variations of a wrist lock, 
by all means, like if that toots your horn, go ahead, do that. I don't need to learn 60,000 ways to do a wrist lock. You know why? Because I can talk. So now with uh, this generation that pretty much grew up on the Attitude Era, I'm a little mm -hmm. older. I grew up with the Golden Era and the New Generation Era. Um, do you feel like there may be an influx of people who don't think about storytelling as much as one think they should? Uh, I wouldn't necessarily say that. I think anybody can catch the gist of what it means to be a professional wrestler. Um, we're just living in a different time, man. That's the thing. Um, times change and you have to change with them. As much as I hate, you know, learning 60,000 ways to do a wrist lock, I know somewhere down the road I might have to use it. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's the game we're in. That's the, that's the type of business that we have right now is a business where people are looking to prove themselves in some way. And for a lot of guys, that's technically on the mat. And that's the way that gets their eyes gets eyes on their stuff, gets eyes on their brand. And if you want to do that, if that's your thing, go ahead, man. But me, I'm more focused on, you know, building a character, building someone that people can connect to. You know, I know my wrestling isn't the best. I'm not the best wrestler in the state mm -hmm. of Texas. You know, I'm not. And, and I'm not going to sit here and gloat and say that I am. But I know what I'm good at. I do. I know what I'm good at. And why not just play to my strengths? Definitely. So um, now as we see uh, other companies open up and we see AEW in particular, they have Dark and they have Elevation where they open the doors up to a lot of independent wrestlers to allow them to get a platform and get more exposure. You see a lot of Texas talent getting signed, even in WWE and AEW. Um, from your perspective, sir, what is there to be said about Texas wrestling that stand, stands out above the rest? Well, if you want me to put over Texas, I will say that um, there are more promotions now in Texas uh, than ever before, ever before. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of good ways for guys to get paid, um, make some money doing this stuff because everybody knows, but nobody wants to say anything about it. Whenever we're on these indies and we're doing these shows, you know, we're not making six figures. We're not making signed guaranteed money. We're doing this shit because we love it, yeah. you know? And it's nice, at least from a worker's perspective, to see places opening up so we can get paid more. Granted, are some of them the best shows? No, but I'm not going to name names because I'm not going to take food off their plate. What I'm saying is it's a chance for everybody to just get better at stuff. And at the end of the day, as a wrestler, that's what I want. I just want, you know, places where I can get better. Some of the best promotions that I've worked for, you know, heavy metal wrestling down in San Antonio. Uh, that's my, that's my bread and butter, man. Those are, those are my boys. Uh, New Texas pro out in Houston and West Texas, um, you know, Texoma pro wrestling revolution. Also like there are genuinely good promotions, uh, inspire AD, which is coming back in uh, September, hopefully, like all these promotions are popping up and popping back up post pandemic or, you know, towards the end of this pandemic. Um, but Texas talent itself has always been good. You know, it's not like there was a dry spell of, you know, where just nobody from Texas was good. No, there's always been talent here. Um, I think one of the things that has held us back though, is that we're so goddamn big. Yeah. Uh, we're so damn big that, it's basically like four states. You have San Antonio, Austin, you have Houston, you have Dallas, you have West Texas. It's, it's four different states in one, and it's hard for everybody from the state of Texas to get eyes because they'll only go to one city or people will fly in and only come to one city. They won't make the entire loop. So it's, it's a little hard, man, but now you're starting to see like there are more places for us to get work and more places for us to get matches, and that's just – only going to be a plus for us. Um, what did you personally do when COVID shut everything down? No shows, uh, even possibly no training for some people, uh, just because everybody wanted to be safe. How does one mentally stay in the game after uh, something like COVID? You don't. You don't. You have to 
at least have that time, you know, COVID for seven months, I didn't have a wrestling match for seven months. I didn't touch a wrestling ring. And mm -hmm. it's, you know, that sounds crazy because everybody says that time off is a wrestler's worst enemy, which is total bullshit. Um, but you know, I'm, I'm sorry, pardon my French here, but I'm just, you no, know, no. We, we're, uh, we're very United Nations here. All, all languages. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I like that. Um, no, man, you, you don't stay in the game when you're not able to play it. You have to disconnect from it a little bit. You have to find out what's important in life. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I learned very quickly that wrestling, wrestling is not the be all end all as much as I love it, as much as I love getting in the ring and, and telling these stories and, and making people feel a certain way. It's not the be all end all of my life, man. I have totally more important aspects that I have to deal with that I have to make sure they are of the utmost priority. And for the longest time before COVID, I let wrestling kind of take a hold of, of the most prioritized things in my life. Gotcha. And that seven month period where I didn't have a wrestling match uh, really helped me kind of put it in perspective. And then some things after that kind of helped me put it in even more of a perspective of like, this is how I need to go about this. Um, so you can't necessarily keep yourself in the game if you can't play it, man. There's, there's, you can study tape and you can, you know, still hone your craft a little bit, but Hey man, it was seven months of a godsend. You know, how many times do you hear wrestlers complain about no off season? Mm -hmm. Like we had an off season, like you guys should be grateful. <laughs> um, so um, when you started, I, here's something I'm curious about. When you started uh, training for professional wrestling, I feel like when you're trying to achieve a goal, you have these kind of benchmarks or these checkpoints. Um, you know, oh, if I do this, I feel like I've made it. Or if I do that, I feel like I've made it. Can you think yeah. about the first checkpoint that you felt like, wow, this is really working now. And this is something I accomplished. Uh, when I got my first envelope. Yeah, when I got my first That's envelope after my very first match. Um, my dream was to be a professional wrestler. And once they handed me that envelope with X amount of money in it, I was a professional wrestler, you know? And, and to me, that was the, the like, hey, if, if, if some, for some godforsaken reason my career ended tomorrow, I can say that I accomplished what I wanted. Um, you know, there have been some other benchmarks, you know, performing in front of my family for the first time. That was cool. Uh, winning my first title, which was the heavy metal television championship, okay. um, you know, in that warehouse that they had down there where it was just like a special vibe about that place. You know, um, winning my first title there was another one. Wrestling guys like uh, TJ Perkins, ACH, you know, and knowing that you can wrestle guys like that and you can hang with them. Those are other benchmarks of like, okay, you know, like, I'm not just doing this because, you know, it was a, it was a pipe dream of mine. I'm doing this because I know I can, mm -hmm. you know, I know I can hang with the best man, like literally put anybody in there with me and I will, I will be fine. You do not have to worry about me. So one stuff thing, like that, man. One thing that you mentioned earlier and that people definitely know about you, if they know who Johnny Bedlam is, is that you are, um, you, uh, you do some of the best promos that, like I, I'll watch your videos and I'm just sitting there like I want to buy a ticket. How important is mic work in the business? Not only to tell the story, but to make somebody get up off their couch, go to a place that they've never been to and watch you wrestle. It's half the game. It's, it's half the game. You know, mm -hmm. uh, these guys that focus solely on their entering work, by all means, I give them all the credit in the world. But if you can't pick up a mic and be entertaining, that's half the game you've already lost. You know, another thing is not everybody who watches wrestling knows what wrestling moves feel like. You know, some people watching on their couch or sitting on their bed or in their parents' basement don't know what a hip toss feels like or don't mm -hmm. know what a suplex feels like. You know what everybody knows, though? How it feels to get verbally assaulted. Gosh. That's what everybody knows. Everybody knows what it's like to get that sick burn that just sticks in the back of your soul. You know, like there's something about it. And everybody knows what it's like to give one of those too. It's mm -hmm. a high. It's like, it's like drugs, man. 
You know, you feel that, that insult given to other person. You're like, Ooh, no, nah, I feel bad. Now I'm going to talk my shit. Like you get a little bit of swagger and that's what it is, man. You're giving me a platform to talk all the shit in the world. Why would I not take it? Why would I not take advantage of it and do it to the best of my abilities, man? That's the stuff that people remember. People remember the moments, the segments, the, the finishes, like the things that made them feel, you yeah. know, if you can take a mic, if you can take a mic, like that guy who's probably going to debut on Friday in Chicago, if you can take <laughs> a mic like that guy and make people feel something, you're miles ahead of everybody else already. I, I, I'll tell you what, talking about the man who should not be named, uh, my girlfriend just w started, she watched like as a kid, like with her grandfather, right? So she remembers like Sean and Undertaker. She remembers the, you know, the big names. So uh, we started watching around the May Young Classic. That's when we started dating. So uh, I'll, I, I, got, I got the network on all day, like all day. And I have highlights playing all day. And she's like, something about that CM Punk guy. She's like, I've never seen him wrestle, but she's like, I love the way he speaks. She's, and not the way he talks, but the way he speaks. But she's like, he's so good at like making me want to see the match. And, um, but yeah, that, um, that is definitely the elephant in the room this week. And who knows what, and you know what, while we're on that subject, who is your Mount Because everybody asks about Mount Rushmore's, but we can go through Mount Rushmore's. I know this is a boring question, but look, look, I'm going to put a little caveat on it. Mount Rushmore's for the mic workers. Mm, okay. Now I made it. Now I, now I kind of. Well since, you ta well, since you tailored it to my strengths, um, let's see. Uh, Flair, of course. Uh -huh. Um now you only have four spots on Mount Rushmore. I only have four spots. I know how Mount Rushmore works. A lot of people don't. Um, <laughs> Flair, uh, Dusty Rhodes, not Cody Rhodes. Um, Flair, yeah. Dusty Rhodes. I would say The Rock, just because of how he was able to pause and let the people do their thing, mm -hmm. um, which is such an important aspect that not a lot of people understand. The timing. So I, have, I have Flair, Dusty Rhodes, The Rock, and for my last one, I'll give it to Punk. I'll give it to Punk because without him, without him hitting that pipe bomb, you know, a lot of things don't happen. It did single-handedly change the business. So that alone should get him a spot on there. Definitely. Johnny Bedlam, I thank you for your time. This Sunday at Official Wrestling Revolution, 956 versus Texas. You will be defending your Grand Warrior Championship against the Chocolate Poppy. And uh, I wish you the best of luck, and I hope to talk to you next time, sir. All right. Thanks for having me, man. Sir, have a good one. That was Johnny Bedlam, uh, Wrestling Revolution Grand Warrior Champion. And now we're going to be talking to Mateo Osuna, who is a newcomer with Wrestling Revolution. Only to the public. Everybody knows that he's been working all these years. Mr. Osuna, how are you, sir? And Matatan is always doing good. How about you, D? How are you doing? I'm doing good. Thank you so much for asking. Thank you for giving me uh, your time. I don't care. Uh, vamos, vamos. Okay, okay I, I apologize. Um, Mateo Osuna, sir, you are not scheduled to be uh, at 956 versus Texas, but you came in a couple months ago in the Battle Royal, and then you had a singles match where you were victorious. Um, what is there to be said, uh, you, sir? How do you feel about not being scheduled for a match this Sunday? Mani, get that word that's become a vaina. Look, okay. I am the, without a doubt, the fastest rising star, not just in Wrestling Revolution, hell, not just in Texas, hell, not just in the United States, the Dominican Republic, all over the damn world. Everybody knows who the hell in Matatan is. So that's why I'm so confused as to why Wrestling Revolution does not have their Matatan on here. Oh, but they got G-Ray, they got Haas, they got Mercer, they got Austin, they don't got Mateo Suna. So how is this the biggest show of the year if their biggest star isn't on the damn card? But you think Matatan cares? Hell no, because I'm still going to be at that show, and I got a lot, a lot more to say. Do you plan on... Um involving yourself in a match or do you plan on taking the microphone uh what what are your plans this sunday to make sure that your voice is heard well if i were to tell you 
It wouldn't be as special. Because let me tell you something, and Matata Mateo Suna is all about the moments. He wants you to go home remembering who the hell Mateo Suna is. So if I were to tell you and spoil everything, there's no magic. There is no Matatan status. So, Mr. D, if you want to know what I'll do, I suggest, and I suggest to everyone else, to go to this Sunday at the Alton Recreation Center in Alton, Texas. And there you can see what a Matatan will do. Well, since you're going to be there, um, I want to ask you about the event itself. 956 versus Texas. Um, Texas wrestling is huge, and now we are doing the Rio Grande Valley, where you're from, against wrestlers from the rest of Texas. If if you were to put yourself in the ring, how 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 much would you represent the Rio Grande Valley against anybody else from outside of the Rio Grande Valley in Texas? Let me tell you something. My body might be here in this nasty, godforsaken place called the Rio Grande Valley, pero mi corazón ahí. My heart is in the Dominican Republic, but I do train at New Breed School of Wrestling. I am out of New Breed School of Wrestling, and I do live in the Valley. So, yes, I guess for eh, an inty bit of percentage, I would represent the Valley. And let me tell you something. I would represent the Valley better than what anybody would have represented them. That way, when they go home back to San Antonio, they go back to Houston, they go back to Austin, Laredo, wherever they're from, they're going to remember that guy from the 956, El Matatan, Mateo Osuna. We talk about the New Breed School of Wrestling uh, that you've come out of. Um, what would you credit your growth to? Because I've known you for quite a while, and um, I, I, you know, I'm very happy for you. I don't know if that means anything to you. but yeah, Probably not. I, I'm, I'm sure it didn't. But um, what would you credit all your growth to? As much as Matatan hates to admit, having to rely on some other people, I couldn't do all this. I couldn't be living my dream without the help of Danny Chance, Chris Austin, Danny Ramones, even Joe Haas whenever he decided to show up. So honestly, my credit does go to all my coaches there at New Breed School of Wrestling and hell, even the other men that are there, such as the amazing DJX, James Blackheart, Mooncat Franco, and other upcoming talents that we have, because they push me to be a better Matatan, and then I push them to get their inner Matatan out. I, I won't lie, it's hard to get out of them because there's only one Matatan, and you're looking at them. Would you consider yourself a a only singles competitor, or Absolutely. is there something? Absolutely, no questions asked. Absolutely, mm -hmm. Matatan always rides solo. So no, no, no way in the future. Nope. I, okay, uh -uh. okay. Mm -mm. all right. Um, I do want to compliment you though on uh, your jewelry. I know you have some uh, a nice chain, nice watch. And chain. My whole hand right here costs more than your house, so of course you want to compliment it. Who does it? Uh Okay, well, um, that, that is uh, something that, you know, we can discuss later. But when it comes to your jewelry, sir, do you feel like maybe you might be worrying about that more than in-ring competition? Coño, te voy a decir una vaina. You see the jewelry, right? Well, that, my jewelry represents my wrestling. You see the flashiness, and Matatan could be flashing the ring if you wanted to. But why am I going to cater to these fans, to these smart marks, if you want to go into the wrestling terminology? Why am I going to try and impress them? Hey, my presence enough speaks by itself. They hear my theme song play, and they already know who the hell's coming out. That's why they get their phones ready, their cheap-ass phones, and they try to record in Matatan. So, with my jewelry, yes, in Matatan always has to look good. He has to look presentable. He has to look like he means business, which is why I always dress, I always present myself in the most fashionable way. Why? Because un dominicano aquí en el valle, coño, dinero. Dinero. I don't see us, like, ever, like, ever hanging out. Nope. But if, <laughs> if we ever did, Dominican food, I'm a big fan of. That's what would sure. be, what would be the, uh, what would be the food that you definitely suggest that I eat from Dominican Republic? I'm going to give you everything. 
I'm breakfast. You want to go tres golpes? Con mango. So you got mango, y lo tres golpes. Which right, is, you know, man. fried salami, some eggs, un puse de quesito, algo de eso. Y luego, para lunch, un sancocho. You know what sancocho is? No. You're from Jersey, and you know what sancocho is. Go on. Sancocho is, it's a beef stew. It has seven meats in it. Okay? Seven meats. Amazing. Mi abuelita makes the best. Te para cenar. For dinner. Un pollo guisado. Coño. How do you guys say it in Jersey? Forget about it. Well, that. Forget about it. Are we going to have any oxtail? I like oxtail. And Matatan only eats oxtail with the highest class, such as myself. So, obviously, you and I would never have oxtail, coño. ¿Qué es lo que te está pensando? What are you thinking? I'm, 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 I apologize. Um, Mr. Osuna, I don't want to take too much of your time. You I would just like to know, uh, I would just like to know what will we expect from Mateo Osuna as we move on to the future? D, I'm going to tell you something right now. El Matatan, I've said this before in my other promos, El Matatan is as unpredictable as they Come, you will not know what I will do at the next show. You will not know why I will, I will appear at the next show. But that is the beauty of Mateo Suna. Because I have the power of unpredictability all in my grasp. I have everyone in the palm of my damn hand. Why? Because look at me. Look, I come on and your viewers go up. Why is that? Because they know that the fastest rising star, Mateo Suna, is here with you. So you're welcome, first of all. Secondly, being Dominican, how many of us are there? Besides Jose Verano, may God rest his soul, who passed last year. How many? That's my goal. That is my goal to reach the Matatan status that Jose Verano was at. So in the future, you can expect me to not just break arms, break some hearts. Porque, mira, lo estoy muy guapo, con. Break some hearts, break some arms, but collect titles. Because that's what El Matatan does. Clearly, you can see, I love the gold. I want it all. So, in the future, you can expect some championships around this shoulder, around this shoulder, around my waist, around my neck, around my calf. I don't give a damn. But you will see Matatan with all the gold in the future. And Matatan, Mateo Osuna, I thank you for your time. I know how, uh, how valuable it is. Uh, but, of course, um, of course. I, thanks again. I, uh, I would say I wish you luck, but you don't have a match this Sunday. So um, we'll see. Um, hey, I, I, they're static. I can't. I think it's disconnecting. I think it's disconnecting. I can't hear uh, what you uh, I, I, I can't. I think we're going to move on to the next guest. Thank you so much, Mateo Suna. I'm sure you had a great time. I appreciate you very much. D, I'm telling you, don't, don't just disconnect me. I, I, I'm, I'm trying to tell you the truth. Well, I swear. It looks like I can't, so I, I think we have to sit here now. Dale, you see? Dale. Yeah. Dale. I don't have a hey, match. Hey, the connection's better. Look at, look at us. Look at us. The connection's better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Coño, carito. I, you take care of yourself, sir. Hey, andale. Vaya, Paloma, vaya. Que mi tampo está muy bien. Andale, vaya, vaya. All right, all right, all right. I'm sorry. I, th I think I think you have to hang up. Oh, yo. Yes. Why should I hang I'm up? Sorry, then? I'm sorry that uh, that you have to like do stuff. Well, why should I hang up then? Look, your viewers have gotten even up even more. Why? It, it 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 has, but we have, have other guests scheduled. You think I'm not the time case with the other guests? Well, they they have matches. But... <laughs> I'm sorry. It was just really easy to. It was. It was. Well, I mean, it was, right? We have other guests. <laughs> no, you hang up. What's up, Derek? How's everybody doing? Oh, man. So that was the Matatan, uh, Mateo Osuna. Um, he's, a, he's, a, he's a hell of a guy. A hell of a guy. Really nice. Really nice. But um, we, uh, I didn't mean to torment him. I'm just saying, we got, a schedule to keep up. We need to like make sure that we are we're good, you know. Um, 
trying to make sure that uh, we have everybody coming up. I didn't mean to torment. It was, you know, I didn't mean to. So we're trying to get um, other people. Hold up, hold up. He will become a title holder. I'm sure he will. I'm sure he will. There's that one. So what's er what, how's everybody doing? Official Wrestling Revolution, thank you so much. Blackheart James, what's going on? Yeah, I'm 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 sorry. I I I did give him respect. I did. I'm sorry. Chewy and Ewok twenty. I I did give him respect. I gave him all the time to talk. I gave him uh, I gave him the the platform. I get. I gave him the space. I gave him the floor. I gave him the mic. I let him talk. I didn't say anything. He does look and act like a champ. Jersey in the house. That's right, Derek. What's going on, baby? Oh, man, you made me want a Cuban sandwich. You know, the pork chop and mustard. Um, I don't even know if... Uh, mm -hmm. let's, let's move on, is what I'm saying. All right? Let's 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 move on. Cause I didn't mean to disrespect them. I'm just saying we have other guests scheduled, and uh, he, they have matches. It's no disrespect. It's just the the, the fact of the whole thing. Yeah. We're gonna move this. While everybody's coming in, we're gonna we're gonna move this. Do this real quick. Let's get on with it. Who's the next guy? So. You guys wait right there. Now we're going to be talking to Hey, how you doing, Mooncat? Hey, brother, man. How you been? Good, good. How are you? I'm doing fantastic, my man. Um, we're trying to get uh, Blackheart in. All right. Blackheart, if you're watching, it says, I'm trying to get you in. Blackheart, if you're watching, it says you need the latest version of Instagram. So make sure you take care of that so we can get you in. Uh, Mooncat, what's going on, sir? A lot of wrestling going on, man. A lot of amazing opportunity. Curls for the girls. Hey, so talk talk about your eclectic uh, taste. Talk about where your music taste came from, because you've always seemed like a groovy, groovy guy. In being genuine, I would say my dad, what I would do is I would steal his CDs so I wouldn't have to buy music at a store. And that's how I got into The Doors, Pink Floyd, Led Zeppelin, Blue Man. And since then, since being 15, it's kind of been like this very spiritual experience of 
something as simple as music you would believe and connecting to it so well that it becomes this kind of life form that takes you away from conformity and how everything has to be so normal and kind of be free and think, you know, that there's so many beautiful things in this world that you could connect to, you know? Music and wrestling are very beautiful things to connect with. So, I mean, anybody can grab their parents' music and listen to it, but what was it about your parents' music that made you gravitate toward it? Because, I, I mean, when I hear an old salsa song, I think of my, my, my mom and my grandparents, but, you know, uh, you really like you said, spiritually connected to this. Can you tell me about what was it that you felt that made you gravitate toward that music and that lifestyle? I've always been such a odd child since way back when I was always very different than most people. And I felt, you know, it was different, the sounds and how I would, you know, kind of understand what I was listening to and relate to it and relate to the people that made the music because a lot of those people were seen as oddities as well, Jim Morrison, David Bowie. And it was something I I just felt like I was seeing myself through them. Mm. Um, so if you were to tell me, you know, who, who it is that you emulate, who it is that you look up to. If, if somebody were to, you know, hey, describe Mooncat Franco in 30 seconds or less, what would you say? I would say Jim Morrison. I, I feel like Jim Morrison. And none of it is really intentional. He is a huge inspiration of mine. But there's certain moments that people just have either see a resemblance in the way I look or the way I dress or in my personality. I have this kind of like calm, relaxed side, more, you know, like crazy on stage kind of personality. So in a funny way, I would say if Jim Morrison was probably a bit cheaper, <laughs> so what is it about uh, the spirituality that you bring to the wrestling ring I I believe everything is so supposed to happen for a reason and everything sort of has a purpose I'm not the kind of person to say you know things don't matter. I believe everything does and I I think everything I try to do in pro wrestling is to kind of get to a or see, you know, it's a beautiful thing, the connection, I guess, the performer and the fan, because you love wrestling, whether you're in the ring or not, and you kind of get to go out there and feel so much energy, and I don't believe it's as simple as, you know, it just being entertainment. I believe it's all about love and all about feeling and being free away from, you know, the seriousness of life to kind of enjoy yourself in a moment. You know? Definitely. Um, so we've known each other for a very, very long time. And we were both training together at Wrestling Revolution. And then, um, you know, the New Breed School of Wrestling opened up. And that's when you really started coming on your own. What can you say about New Breed School of Wrestling that has helped you out throughout your career? It's something that I generally believe it's not the kind of environment where people are just like, give me money and, you know, we'll train you. As soon as you're there, like your first day, Danny Chan treats you with your family. And it's one of those things where, you know, they try to get to know you personally. It's not just, oh, you're someone training, we'll train you if you give us money. As soon as you're there, they want to know who you are and you feel very comfortable. And I believe that's why I'd, I've had experience because you know me. I've always been this kind of shy and more yeah. person. 
and being in such a good environment, I've started to open up in ways that I thought I would. And I think I see it in everybody else as well. That comes, There's no way you can't go there and enjoy yourself and have fun. You know, go like, this is the place to be. And I believe I really know that. So this Sunday at, um, at Wrestling Revolution 956 versus Texas, you're representing the 956. And it's going to be you and Blackheart James. James Blackheart, excuse me. And you're going to be facing Just Nick and Edgar Garza. Is there a, a coalition that you're going to form with Blackheart? Or do you go in there thinking that you're just going to win it for yourself? I believe I'm a good person. And the way things have kind of worked out since James Blackheart has been a new breed is he kind of went a different direction than I Um I want to be as peaceful as I can and be as loving as I can. And he's an intimidating person. And he kind of chose a more evil side, more evil way of getting opportunities. It's, you know, he's a shark and everything is, you know, up for uh, want to get those titles and you want to be the person in the main event you want to be winning and he understood that and look at the show welcome uh blackheart good to be here man thanks a lot for joining uh we're talking to uh mooncat we're talking about the fatal four-way that you guys are doing this Sunday at 956 versus Texas. And I was asking, maybe I can get your perspective, if you guys are going to form an alliance of sorts to make sure that the 956 is represented well, or will you be just there by yourself? Well, I was thinking I would use Mooncat as a weapon. Uh, you don't have to be my friend, but I'll, maybe I'll pick him up and throw him into Edgar or into Just Nick. Uh, I think that's going to work pretty well for me. Um, if he has a say in it, doesn't matter. I beat your ass before Mooncat, and there's going to be one winner on on Sunday. So, so Moon Mooncat is I've known Mooncat a long, long time, and he's uh, been just uh, you know the coolest of all of all the people that I've met. Um, how do you feel about his approach to life and his approach to wrestling? You know, um, very peaceful, very, uh, I guess you can say a groovy kind of thing. Um, what's your take on Mooncat Franco? I think Mooncat Franco is as groovy and loving and uh, curly-haired little care bear as much as I am what I am, which is a destroyer. You know, I crave, you know, I just want to hit people in the face. I want to fight. I like to get hit back. I love it. So as much as he loves all that, I think that's what I am to to my own to my own personality. Uh, and in that regard, I think he does bring in the effort to the ring. He he's rocked me a few times, uh, but um, he's just not me. And when we talk about you, you've uh, definitely uh, been one of the quickest uh, rising stars in Wrestling Revolution. You came out of nowhere in a three-on-three -three match, and you're just a monster in the ring. Um, what do you credit your quick rise to? To being hungry and wanting to be the best. And my time at New Breed, uh, you know, it did pay, it paid off for me because I learned a lot. Um, Danny Chance taught me how to be a great wrestler. He is a great wrestler. You know, I do respect him, don't like him, but I do respect him. Um, I think the direction they wanted to take me was not the path I wanted to choose for myself, and I went my way. I did my thing, but the being what I am in the ring, uh, I did learn that at New Breed. So, um, Mooncat, what can we expect from uh, Mooncat Franco in the future as we as we uh, march along and finish off twenty twenty one? What's that? The whole world. Uh, All of it. 
I'm sorry, your audio's a little messed up. Can we, one more time? The whole world. I can't, I can't hear you, hold on. Uh, while, you're fi while you're fixing that uh, black card, what can we expect from black card as we finish off the year? Take over. <sighs> Mooncat, shut your mouth. Uh, black card at the end of the year. I'm going to keep climbing that ladder. I'm going to keep climbing that ladder. I don't plan on getting pinned anytime soon. I want to be the Grand Warrior. That's my goal. If I can get there before the year, then then that's perfect. Mooncat, I'm going to beat them. You wait till Sunday, Mooncat. You can't shut up. I'm going to shut you up. We were trying to, we were trying to get your answer out of you, but your audio was messed up. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can. I will take over the whole world. <laughs> take over the whole world. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, you know, uh, Black Bear, where you know, um, something I, 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 I think, as my notes are correct, uh, did you serve in the military, sir? I did. I was uh, military police for the U.S. Navy. Well, I thank you for your service. Um, what is it about, uh, you know, uh, people who serve in the military kind of find an escape in wrestling when they come home? Um, what, what is it about professional wrestling uh, from a personal standpoint that uh, is a good escape for people who have served in the military? Uh, I think in the military, it's... Uh you're, you know, you're, you're, you're one grain of sand in the hourglass. You, you know what I mean? Yeah. And then uh, when you come into professional wrestling, you are who you are. And there's no one who's going to tell you differently. And that's, that's what it's all about for me is uh, going out there being James Blackheart. You know, in the past, I, uh, you know, I, I served and I did what I did. And that was that. And it was great. And now I'm doing this and I love it very much. And it's just a uh, tra transition was just it was so perfect. Awesome. Uh, Mooncat, Blackheart, I thank you guys for your time. Again, you guys are going to be part of the Fatal 4-Way this Sunday at uh, Wrestling Revolution 956 versus Texas. I thank you guys for your time. You guys, I will take over the world. Okay. Uh, you guys have a great night, and we'll see you Sunday. Oh, I'll get out of here. I love Press you. The, love you too, buddy. Press the little X. All right. That was Mooncat Franco and uh, James Blackheart appearing this Sunday at Wrestling Revolution 956 versus Texas. We're now going to bring in Chris Austin, um, who will also be having a match this Sunday against Aaron Mercer. What up, what up, what up? What's up, Chris? How you been, man? I have been good. How about you? I've been good. Thanks for asking. A uh, little history between us. I have designed your dope shirt. Uh, so anybody who wants to buy uh, Chris Austin shirt, go to Pro Wrestling Tees. Yes, sir. Thank you for the plug. No problem. Uh, so uh, you are one of the trainers at New Breed School of Wrestling. How important is it to uh, teach the next, next generation as we move on? Uh, it's very important because wrestling's always moving forward. You know, we never go back. We always, Tommy Lee. What the? Um, <laughs> sorry, I read one of the comments. I saw that. Um, um, yeah, you know, we're always uh, pushing forward, trying to you know create the next generation because we don't want to be, uh, you know, in this world where it's just you know like you know the NFL. The NFL dies if we don't get any players, right? Right, of course. No, wrestling will die if we don't get new wrestlers. It's important to, you know, shape the future. You know, you, you, uh, you've, you're also like, uh, I want to say probably four or five, maybe six years at the most in the business, but you've, you've grown so quickly. I'm sorry, go ahead and correct me. How, how long has it been? Four. Four years. Barely four. Yeah. But you've grown so quickly, and one rivalry I want to talk about is your rivalry with uh, Rob Love including the cage match that you guys had at Cena Array. 
where you actually got a concussion. Can you talk about that rivalry and what, what was your biggest takeaway from those uh, series of matches? Yeah, it was uh, one of – probably the biggest rivalry in my singles career. And it was probably, like, the first big one I had also in my singles career. Uh, and I learned a lot, uh, you know, as much as I probably don't like Rob Love, you know, that rivalry did teach me a lot about myself, who I wanted to be as a wrestler, and what I want to give back to the community, all that stuff, you know. Um, and it really, I guess, toughened me up, too. Uh, I mean, I was already kind of a tough guy, but, you know, that made me top tier. I mean, in the middle of the ring, bleeding with my head busted open in the hospital for two days, you know, like, that kind of changes you a bit. And, um, yeah, I, I learned a lot in that rivalry. So as, as you became a trainer for New Breed School of Wrestling, <clears throat> excuse me, in McAllen, Texas, if anybody wants to uh, start training as a manager – or as a wrestler, um, what have you learned about yourself as a trainer? Because now it's kind of like having kids, because with my daughter, I've learned a lot about myself, because now I'm teaching right and wrong. So when it comes to wrestling and being a trainer, what have you learned about yourself as, as, uh, as we move along? Uh, so at first, at being a trainer, I was kind of, I would admit, I was kind of not good at it. I didn't really know exactly, you know, how to teach wrestling. Uh, uh, it's kind of like that old Shawn Michaels thing where, yeah, he was good at it, but he didn't really know how to teach it that well. Mm -hmm. So so I was kind of struggling, but after a while, being with the guys, you know, starting to get a little bit comfortable getting my groove, um, I've learned a lot about myself. Uh, um, I'm good at, you know, just letting the guys know that I'm there for them. If they need anything, uh, any questions they have, I'm there to answer. Uh, if they need help with uh, learning a certain move or they need ideas with moves, you know, or, or you know, who they want to be when they step out of those curtains. You know, I'm, I'm really good at that stuff. Uh, so this Sunday, it is going to be 9-5 uh, Thick. Uh, made him puke at training once. Are you, are you that tough of a trainer? You made somebody puke? Yes, I'm actually – that's another thing. I'm good at uh, conditioning drills. That's and... funny because he made me puke when he trained me. <laughs> Yeah, so, yeah, it's like, there's levels to this. <laughs> Made uh, Joe Haas, the one and only Joe Haas. Joe Haas. Uh, we're going to be talking to him right after you. But uh, I do want to talk about this Sunday, 956 versus Texas. You are representing the 956. What is there to be said about Texas wrestling, and, and how do you want to represent uh, the Rio Grande Valley? Um, I want to show that the Rio Grande Valley has the, some of the best talent here in, the, uh, in Texas. You know, everyone likes to talk about San Antonio, Moss, and Corpus, Laredo, but, I mean, the RGV's growing, man. Uh, we're starting to, you know, bust some talent. We've got the amazing Danny Chance. we got Mooncat, who you just talked to. we got guys like Matt Ryan. we got guys like Eric Shadows. we got guys like myself. we got Joe Haas, Danny Ramones. Um, and then we got new kids on the rise, like Mooncat, DJX. Um, they got James Blackheart, you know, like, RGV has a lot of talent, a lot of potential, and this Sunday we're going to show that we're going to put that potential to work. Definitely. Um, you are a multiple-time South Texas champion and Grand Warrior champion. Um, do you have that title set in your sights, or are you uh, more so taking not, – not taking a break, but what is, what is your perception right now with the championships? Do you feel, you, do you feel you're going to challenge again? Um, I hope so. Uh, I did. Unfortunately, oh, and Mateo Suna. I don't know why I forgot Mateo Suna. It's because he doesn't have a match this this Sunday. <laughs> it's, yeah, he doesn't have a match. We touched on that subject, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I lost my title to Johnny Bedlam. Uh, I guess I overestimated what I was walking into uh, during that match at Rise of the Phoenix, and uh, he did beat me. But I hope to you know, get that opportunity again and beat Johnny Bellum and regain the Grand Warrior title. You're going to be representing the Rio Grande Valley against Aaron Mercer, who is not a walk in the park. Is this a different type of preparation? Or um, is, is this like you're going to come in and do what you do and hopefully get a good result out of it? So I know that, uh, yes, I did get a haircut. Um, thank you for noticing. Uh, <laughs> 
And uh, I know Aaron Mercer's a tough guy. He's a hard hitter. I know he's a good wrestler. So um, right now, yeah, I'm kind of walking into it a bit differently. Uh, I'm kind of focused. I'm trying to, you know, focus on my strikes a little bit more for the past two weeks in preparation because I know this is not going to get uh, – this is not going to be pretty. Mm-hmm. This is going to be an ugly fight. I just know. I mean, you saw the, the flyer. The guy has blood all over his Definitely. face. I mean, this is going to be a nasty war, and I'm really excited uh, for it. And, yeah, I'm ready to go in there and get down and dirty. This Sunday in Alton, Texas, 956 versus Texas, official uh, wrestling revolution. Uh, make sure you guys follow them. Make sure you guys follow Chris Austin. Chris, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for having me, man. No problem, bro. Take Cheers, care. Buddy. Cheers, buddy. <laughs>
is the one thing that people don't focus on enough when they decide to start training for professional wrestling. Oh, man. Um, you know, everybody's different. Not everybody has to be the athlete of the day. Uh, not everybody comes in with, um, with the most creative of minds. And, you know, it really, it really differs per person. I mean, I'm not much of a runner myself, but I know that uh, when it comes to the ring time, there's a lot of cardio-based, uh, you know, drills that we run, which is a lot different than running you know, sprints outside or running long distance and things like that. Conditioning is probably the one thing that, that everybody comes in, um, you know, unexpectedly conditioning is really what you need the most. No, uh, no. Uh, I don't know if you remember Eddie from training, but he touched base over here saying that uh, he threw up one time at our training, and I remember that too. But, uh, but yeah, man, conditioning, 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 conditioning. Uh, definitely. So um, you are representing the uh, Rio Grande Valley this Sunday at 956 versus Texas. You know, Texas in a broader statement has been – uh, definitely magnified uh, with larger companies, with a lot of people getting signed to AEW and WWE. What is there to be said about Texas wrestling and the wrestlers that come out of Texas? Well, the, the one thing about Texas wrestlers is that uh, we all hit hard. You know, that's for sure. Um, Texas wrestlers, you know, that, uh, for a long time, we were being overlooked. Uh, now, we're seeing a lot more faces on, on TV Seeing companies running shows down here in Texas, like happening from from out of the state down to yeah. put on all of the shows, and um, I think that the, the talent in Texas is hungry. The talent in Texas is ready. You've got trainers not just here in the Valley, but trainers in San Antonio and beyond here in the great state that are getting their students prepared for for opportunities. Just yesterday, there were some students of Hybrid over at Raw backstage. Yeah. That's a huge testament to what tech talent really has. Yeah, Casey Blackrose, uh, geez, uh, he had a match against Keith Lee for uh, a main event taping. And just to, just to say that you wrestled against Keith Lee, and you haven't had your fair – I mean, you've had your fair share of a laundry list of people that you have um, wrestled. You've wrestled Jinder Mohal. You've wrestled Roe, who is now Eric, I think, now of the Viking Raiders. Um when you see these names get up there, how, how does that make you feel about yourself, knowing that you were part of that path for them? Man, it's a, it's a feeling that, um, you know, I feel that I, I'm just inches away from where these people are. You know, I'm, I'm at arm's length pretty much. I, I've been in the ring with Keith Lee. There was a time over in Austin, myself and Dan Williams teamed up, and we wrestled Keith Lee and um, uh, Jerome Davis, you know, in a tag team match. Uh, up there in ACW. So, you know, seeing guys like he, guys like Ray Rowe, guys I've been in the ring, you know, the fact that they're already there. I mean, first of all, I'm proud, uh, you know, of them. They're, but I feel that I'm at a point of there myself. You know, why Why not? Why couldn't I be there too, you know? Definitely. Um, so I remember one time Chance was showing us arm drags. And, um, I, you know, I was just still months in, so I was kind of stiff. I was kind of nervous. I'm really afraid to, like, hurt anybody. So um, he started, like, without pulling him back the curtain too much, I was just doing it wrong. So he started grabbing my arm and dragging me around the ring, and he told me, I want you to feel what you're making me feel. So with that being said, how important is trust in the wrestling ring with your opponent? Oh, man, it's very important. I mean, there's going to be times that uh, you get with people who don't like a uh, quick story. Uh, there's, there's a guy, uh, his name is Vic. You know, you wrestle as, as Vicious Vic. Vic. And uh -huh. uh, I don't like it on a personal basis, but in the ring, I trust them, you know, so, so we have to put that trust into one another and, uh, you know, because we're giving each other each other's bodies. So that's what wrestling really is. Yeah. So factor, you've got to trust your opponent 100% and trust that, business, you know, do the right business too. Uh, Joe, I thank you so much for your time. You are in the main event against T. Ray, who is not a small man. And I'm sure it's going to be two meaty men just smacking each other across the ring. And uh, we can't wait. It's 956 versus Texas, presented by Wrestling Revolution in Alton, Texas. Joe, thank you so much for your time. Real quick, before you let me go, not only am I going to be representing the 956, but I'm going to be representing the 956 click. There it is, a thick click. So uh, we'll be having some shirts available for sale there at the merch table. So everybody keep an eye on that. Visit of awesome.
I need to get me one of those shirts. I still have my old, uh, the old band, the, the King of Chingasso style, right? That was the one. That was one of my favorites, man. <laughs> I loved it. Joe, thank you so much. We'll see you Sunday. Take care, sir. Bye. All right. So there you have it. Wrestling Revolution 956 versus Texas. I thank everybody for watching. Follow me if you can, and make sure you guys follow Wrestling Revolution. You guys take care, and have a good night.